Hi everyone, Alicia McGill here with Math Labs. Today we're looking at Lab 3.3, which is basically the same content standard that we've been working with in Lab 3.0, which was actually a review, multiplying fractions and looking at that visual model, but then 3.1, 3.2, and we're going to continue on until we arrive at fraction divided by fraction, and then a fraction divided by a whole number. That'd be an interesting lab. And then we'll conclude with some application problems and even story problems that you get to make up involving division of fractions. So we're going to get right to it. All right, this particular problem, 2 divided by 3 fifths, we are finding the quotient. All right, and as you know, the quotient is the answer when you divide. Good memory. So let's look at that particular problem. 2 divided by 3 fifths. And before we do that, I want to just tap into some prior knowledge. Do you recall in elementary school a problem like, say, um, you know, 13 divided by 2? And, you know, this was an odd number. If I draw this visual model, which I'll do for you here, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, here's 13. And remember what the meaning of this division problem means. Okay, there's, there's two meanings. We can divide this in two groups, right, and see how many are in each group, or we can think about how many groups of two go into 13. And that's kind of been our consistent strategy because that helps us understand division of fractions because that's the way that we can easily see the quotient. So let's see, how many groups of two are in 13? Well, as you know, we've been circling groups of two, right? So there's a group of two, there's a group of two, and so on until we, uh-oh, we have just one. I can't make a whole group. But I see one, two, three, four, five, six whole groups, but this remainder, you remember that, it's the remainder, um, is a part of this group. And since it takes two to make a group, this portion is one out of that two, which you know one out of two is a half a group, right? That makes sense, it looks like a half a group, right? So our portion was six and a half. And from there, and hopefully you were shown the visual model in elementary school because that's really the conceptual way to understand it. And then from there, you learned, of course, the standard algorithm and, and dividing 13 divided by 2 goes 6 times, and there's your remainder. And then it shows up here. You put the 1 right over the 2, but maybe you didn't know why you were doing that. That's why this conceptual model is important to prove that, and then it kind of makes sense now. You're like, oh, it goes in six whole times, and then there's that half left over. So today we're going to look at a similar problem, but of course we're looking at division of fractions. So I want you to, to keep this in the back of your mind, okay, or the front, or, or in the middle. I mean, it's, it's all important <laughs> because this is all gravy. You know, I don't even like gravy. All right, let's erase. So here's the thing. We have this problem, right? Two divided by three-fifths. I'm going to kind of write it bigger. When I noticed I watched the videos, you know, I don't have a large budget, but that if I wrote small, it was kind of hard to see. So let's, let's use the blue and write a little bit larger. So we have two holes, right? You remember that we start by drawing the two holes. And these are our fraction bars that represent holes. And we want to see how many groups of three-fifths are in two. So that's our meaning. Remember in the lab, in every box in the lab, it asks for three things. What's the meaning? Is this less than or greater than one? So we're going to use estimation. And then what's the quotient? All right, so I already went through the meaning. Um, I'm going to say this is more than one, right? Because three-fifths is just a small number if you think about it, and it's a fraction, so that's going to go into two more than one time. So I'm going to say it's greater than one, all right? So the quotient is greater than one. And so now let's look at how we can divide this into fifths so that we can circle our groups of three-fifths, okay? So we draw, if you remember, let's go back to the blue, Four lines, one, two, three, four, make fifths, all right? So these are all fifths, 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 and fifths, okay? Same thing here, but I'm not going to write that they are a fifth, okay? We're going to remember that. All right, so making fifths enabled us to be able to circle groups of three fifths, right? If, if we divided this into eighths, that wouldn't help us, so that's why we always choose that denominator. All right, so we're going to circle groups of three fifths, so one, two, three. There's a group of three-fifths, would you agree? That's always the fun part, right? All right, so then we have, you know, one, two, three-fifths over here. It's kind of like my lima bean, right? And then we have another group of three-fifths. Uh-oh. We have 
is one left over. So we have three whole times, okay? So, so far our quotient is three, but it's a little bit more than three because we have this remainder here. So if you think about the group, how many parts does it take to make a whole group? Well, we're talking about three fifths, so there's three fifths, and we only have one left over. Now, a common misconception is to think that the remainder is one fifth, right? And just say, oh, the answer is three, and then there's one fifth left over. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about how many groups. That's why I really wanted to reinforce how many groups go in, because this is not a fifth. It's part of a group. So that's one out of one, two, three parts to make a group. So this is one third of a group. Ah, that's radically different than one fifth, okay? So that's what this remainder um, really means. And I want you to be able to interpret that remainder and say, hmm, we're talking about groups here. So this is one third of a group. All right, now in this lab, the focus is, because you're really good with models, A, making sure you understand how to draw a model, but B, when you're making your table, the focus is to actually multiply the quotient times the um, divisor, okay? And that's what you're gonna do in the table. So let me just go ahead and do that with you here, three and one third. If I turn that into an improper fraction, it's 10 thirds uh, by virtue of three times three is nine, right? Add the one, 10 thirds. If you did the math labs in fifth grade, that was um, definitely a really important lab where you kind of discovered that trick instead of just memorizing and like, why does that work? You know, why do I just multiply the denominator times the big number, that whole number, and add the one? You know, that's jumping through a lot of hoops. Um, and you got to understand what each of those hoops means, right? And why you're doing what you're doing. So I'm just going to do the shortcut at this point because we're in sixth grade. So we remember that three and a third is, is really ten thirds, right? Times three fifths. And then what should we get here? In the end, we get 30 over 15. And this is improper, and as you recall, we need to divide this. So 15 goes into 32 times. And what you're going to do is practice this skill, because teachers can tell you all the time, oh, check your work. You know, there's a way to check using the inverse, but until you are engaged in doing that, you're probably not gonna utilize that strategy. So, I'm forcing you to. Um, so that's what you're gonna be doing in your lab today, is, is really working with the quotient, and the divisor, and the dividend, and I want you to understand that vocabulary. So in the table, it's going to give you an example, and it's really going to reinforce that. Take the quotient, your answer. Multiply it by the divisor. Simplify and see what you get, because then you're using that language as well. Okay, so on your whiteboards, I'm going to have you do a problem with the remainder, and make sure that you can interpret that remainder correctly in terms of a numerical value. All right, so let's look at the example four divided by five, six, all right? So what we have here is four holes, okay? So I'm gonna start by drawing one, two, three, four, okay? Now you're gonna be doing this on your whiteboard, all right? And so if you could take those out, we're gonna do this one together, and then the next one I want you to do on your own, okay? And it's a short lab today, so even if we spend 15 minutes on the launch, um, you only have a few problems to do, and then some more in the independent practice to continue. All right, so we're gonna divide this into six. And let's just go all the way here, because we're talking about six. Kinda of want our holes to be the same size. All right, so what I'm gonna do is make five lines, remember? One, two, three, four, Five lines make six. Okay, so here's a six, 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 here's a six. And I'm just going to continue on and do the same thing. Okay, do this with me on your whiteboards. Okay, so make your four holes and divide them into six. I'll give you a minute to do that. That was a fast minute, huh? All right, you can pause the video, right? So we're going to look at our meaning first. So the meaning is how many five, six are in four, or how many groups of five, six go into four, or are in four, okay? We'd say that anyway. Now we're gonna circle groups of five, six and count them, all right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, 
There's a group of five, six. All right. This is the fun part. I always like this part. I like to count a lot when I was a child. One, two, three, four, five. There's a group of five, six. One, two, three, four, five. There's a group of five, six. One, two, three, four, five. There's a group of five, six. So, so far I have four whole groups of five, six, but I have one, two, three, four left over, and it takes one, two, three, four, five to make a group. So what part of the group do I have here? Because I don't have a whole group, right? If I had another six, I would have a whole group, but the problem is not four and a six divided by five, six. And that would be golden, and it would be a whole number for our quotient. However, we don't have that. So we have not a whole group, part of a group, so this is one, two, three, four out of the one, two, three, four, five parts to make a group. So four out of five. You remember um, the part to whole understanding in elementary school. So you have the part, which is four, out of the whole, which is five parts to make a group. So we're talking about how many groups. We have four whole groups, and then we have a part of a group, four fifths of a group. Okay? So in this lab, you would then multiply your quotient which we get 24 fifths, so this is kind of like the check, right? 24 fifths, and you're going to multiply that by your divisor, which is 5 6. And if you know the shortcut, you can cross cancel the 5s, right? Okay, so those become 1s. And you could even cross cancel here, but I'm just going to go straight across at this point. 24 times 1 is 24, and 1 times 6 is 6. I just want to reinforce that I'd like for your answers to, to be simplified when you end with an improper. Please make sure you divide it out because sometimes, um, you know, you may have a mixed number or whatnot in the independent practice. So 6 goes into 24 four times. And, of course, that's what we started with, with our dividend. So we finish this problem together. You're going to do one on your own. And then you're going to work on the lab. And then in about mm, maybe 20 minutes, we're going to reconvene, summarize our learning, and report our findings. And, and then hopefully... Oh, and I want you to also test out the algorithm, okay? Um, remember, in lab 3.2, 3.1, spoiler alert, there was an algorithm. I don't want to talk about that right now just yet um, until we kind of make our way through the labs. But um, some of you are like, oh, I want to make sure that, that that little trick, that little procedure, that algorithm that I discovered um, can be applied here with this division problem, all right? So have fun. Thank you.